Hello Biotechnicals, this is Dr. Farhan Zameer, an adjunct professor and academic specialist at Biotechnica Bangalore. Today we are here for a great series which is Ideas to Innovation. So we are transforming ideas and getting it to innovation. So this is mainly dedicated for people who are doing research and especially they have been stuck with a particular research and hence this is called as my research topic. So what is this my research topic for today? We will try to dwell in. Let's go in. Welcome back. As I told you, for today, my research topic is on experimental tissue transplantation. Now, I call it as a topic which is very close to my heart and let me try to take you upon a, a entire saga, an entire story of how exactly experimental tissue transplantation can take place with a specific reference of skin, skin grafting. Okay, so how do I take skin grafting model and then try to study the tissue transplantation? So, to begin with, now what do you observe in this particular slide? Okay, so when I ask you the same question, okay, uh, yes, you know, uh, there are four beautiful ladies, but you know, the point is not that. What do you observe in the four? Okay, the in the four, okay, the, there is one, there's a beautiful smile. And apart from that, you have the change in their skin texture. Now, your skin is one of the largest organ in terms of your surface area. It is the largest organ in your body and your first representation, your first, you know, recognition as a person comes out of your skin. Okay, so hence skin plays a very, very important role. But however, not everybody are lucky enough during their, you know, from their, from their birth to their death because there are certain mishaps and there are certain accidents which can happen and this can lead into a various kinds of uh, you know burns or injuries and this can remain for your lifetime which can change the entire cosmics of your uh, of your survival or even your entire outlook of your uh, uh, you know of your body now uh, I did not want it to include certain, you know, disturbing images when I was actually uh, researching on this particular topic uh, and onto Google, there are so disturbing images that, you know, people when they get first degree wound, second degree wound, third and fourth degree wound, it is so disturbing to actually view it. Now, if it is disturbing for us to view it, just imagine of that person who is actually suffering with that. And hence, with science, as I always tell you, we need to execute good science which can minimize suffering. And one such beautiful topic is the skin grafting, which can again, uh, you know, regain. It could be a rebirth for the person who is actually suffering. Now, before we go into the depth of how exactly things have been done using, you know, uh, different kind of models, let me try to give you a brief background of how exactly a burn injury happens and, you know, what are the various components of your skin. Now, when I refer skin, skin is a beautiful organ. It is just a gunny bag wherein every, every parts of your, every organs of yours have been packed up. Okay. And it is totally elastic. So, uh, it has majorly three layers. Now, the, the, the first layer or the, the topmost layer is called as the epidermis. Below the epidermis, there is dermis and below the dermis, there is hypodermis. So, now these are the three components that is epidermis, dermis and hypodermis. Now, by any point of time in the cartoon, you are able to see that if any point of time, if there is a corrosion, if there is some burn or there is some injury or some damage onto the top layer that is the epidermal layer and which is just touching the uh, you know, dermis, okay, this kind of a burn or this kind of an wound is called as first degree burn. Now, in the second degree burn, this uh, reaches the, the dermis and that is how you can see the, the, you know, the dermal layer, which is like completely exposed and this is called as a second degree wound. But however, in third degree and fourth degree wound, which are much more disturbing and much more deeper, so this can go into your hypodermis and, you know, this can lead into a lot of invasion, 
pain, you know, burning sensation and uh, especially I mean most of the conditions if it has been maintained in an unhygienic environment, okay, this can lead into uh, secondary infections also. So with this as an understanding, how do I, if, you know, I, let me take a scenario. If there is already a subject who is like completely burned, okay, what is the various other mechanisms in which I can look upon using science so that using tissue engineering or tissue grafting technology, how can I regain the same texture of the skin? Okay, but for this to happen, for, for me to address this particular research topic, okay, I need to have an experimental model. Directly, I cannot work on humans and hence to start with an experimental model for today, I would take up a beautiful model that is called as mouse model. Okay, so this is somehow I call it as, you know, mouseology or this is where we are trying to look upon, you know, a very serious topic that is tissue transplantation, especially on a mouse model. And this is with a model system, which is called as skin graft model. Okay, now you can ask me, sir, you know, why give a mouse a skin graft? Now, what is it necessary for me to consider a mouse as a graft skin grafting model? Now, you know, one way to investigate what we have found out is, you know, uh, you know, what we actually do it in the test tube, what we prove it in vitro, is many a times it is not true in vivo. And hence, to establish the connectivity, to establish the biomimicry of humans, okay, we need to have an in vivo model. And one of the best model, okay, which can actually mimic the entire whole, uh, you know, human body is the, the, uh, the mouse model. Now, coming on to it, uh, in terms of immunology, because we are talking about uh, you know, grafting and transplantation, the very important issue which would come into picture is your, you know, graft rejection. And graft rejection mainly happens because of, uh, you know, uh, immunological responses. And this immunological response, especially with the rat and, uh, sorry, with the mouse and that of the humans are completely comparable. So hence, it gives me an alignment to proceed forward. Now, apart from that, you have the inbred strains of mouse, which are of, you know, identical twins in humans and exactly they have the genetic material and this always paves me ways to reproduce the results in a much better way. However, okay, when I, you know, when I look into the comparison of the data, okay, especially with mouse in, in skin graft model, okay, I can correlate, I can have triple R approach or I can have an RQ approach, RRR approach, okay. So what is this RRR approach? It's not the movie, but however, RRR approach is, you know, I can have a model, a skin graft model, which is, uh, you know, reliable, which is rapid and which is reproducible. So this is in research is called as RRR model. So, um, hence, you know, uh, a mouse model is a more reliable model for any kind of skin graft experimental studies. So at this point of time, I want you people to understand two major terminologies which are not that complex. So the first terminology is a donor. So who is a donor? So a mouse skin, okay, who, you know, the skin which has been taken up and which has been, you know, the, 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 the you know, the, the skin which has been actually extracted for the grafting, the, you know, that is called as the giving skin or it is also called as the donor skin. However, the mouse which, you know, receives the skin, we call it as receiving skin or it is also called as, you know, the, the recipient. So with this, I have the donor and I have the recipient. Now, in a particular laboratory setup, I have made it sure that, you know, you understand this uh, with, uh, you know, with complete details, with intricate details so that you are able to reproduce it. So what are the, what are the necessities? What are the consumables which are, uh, which are necessary on the day of, you know, skin graft? So you can look into the, the, the image wherein you have all the details of, you know, uh, uh, the entire procedure and, uh, you know, to remind you, this all these procedures are been actually uh, my postdoctoral work and this was actually been uh, executed with IQAC permissions and with the OECD guidelines which have been followed. Okay, all the animal ethical committee rules have been followed and this was been done under the strict supervision of a veterinarian and uh, you know my, my senior uh, uh, research uh, member. So here, uh, you know, uh, for donor tail uh, skin preparation, what we do is we take up the uh, the mouse, 
okay and then the tail skin has been actually you know taken up you know it was been properly cleaned and then the tail skin has been actually uh, very carefully ripped off you can actually look into the entire protocol of skinning out very delicately this has been skinned out under anesthesia um, and you know with all the protocols which have been followed and which have been uh, you know camera uh, you know uh, monitored so once this has been done you will collect that the donor skin and this has been actually you know uh, uh, chopped into uh, you know desired uh, uh, you know uh, measurements so once you have the donor tail skin preparation which has been ready now you have the recipient preparation which have been you know uh, uh, fixed out with uh, six animals in a particular group uh, uh, normally uh, we we take around six animals in a particular group which is uh, you know uh, beyond that it is a bit hectic to manage uh, the animal but however uh, anything with uh, an animal number of five to six uh, in a particular group is a decent number for a reproducible data. So once you have this, the next protocol is you actually shave the the, uh, the fur of the, the animal. Normally, we do not use any kind of, uh, you know, uh, hair removal creams. So the better method is to very delicately uh, use a small animal shaver and you remove the fur of it. So once it has been removed, then, you know, the skin, the, the topmost epidermis is like properly exposed. And after the exposure, what you do is the very carefully you actually cut out a small piece okay of around you know one centimeter by one centimeter you cut it off so once this has been done uh, you know the the, uh, the recipient skin is actually removed out and the donor tail skin you remember in the previous slide we took the donor slide you know a tail skin and that you know graft has been actually put on to the the past area and then it has been properly dressed so with a with a proper dressing okay uh, the uh, you know the graft has been replaced so once this has been deep replaced this goes on the entire protocol um, you know we apply the pastor of paris um, the entire cast has been done and then you know uh, after around 10 days the cast has been removed so this is the series of uh, photographs which has been uh, you know which actually will help you in step by step protocol uh, to be followed uh, and very important point what we need to um, you know uh, remember during these 10 days is uh, there are high instances that you know post op we need to go for uh, you know high degree of observation because there are chances because the animal uh, is under fatigue the animal is in anxiety and hence uh, there is a high chance that it will start eating or it will try to scratch the the uh, the gas okay so this can lead into uh, you know the uh, the 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 gas could go and get stuck into the tooth of the, uh, the the animal and it could get caught and that can lead into a lot of uh, frustration and stress okay and uh, there's a high chance that you know the threading can also uh, you know lead into the winding of uh, the arms or the limbs and hence it becomes very very important that at least once in 3 hours or once once in 5 hours we need to go and observe the animal and if there are certain you know threads which are protruding out it becomes very important on the part of the researcher to cut it off so once this has been done uh, you know after the day 10 again the gauze has been removed the dressing has been removed and when you observe the animal okay uh, if if there is a pink patch which has been uh, you know which has been formed onto the the entire surface wherever you have grafted if there is a pink spot wherein you know you you know that you know it has become a part of the 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 main body skin so if that happens this is called as the graft has got accepted however if the graft has not been accepted you get a black spot and that is a, a rough patch on the on the skin of the animal okay and that that, that would actually stand out as entirely a separate entity and it will not become an integral part of the skin of that animal and that is how you know that the animal you know that particular graft has been rejected so this is how you know on an observational basis you know that whether the graft has been accepted or the graft has been rejected now you can use various kinds of models you can take black six mice you can take up uh, sga uh, variety you can take up uh, you know albinos okay depending upon your requirement and what exactly you want to study you can actually formulate your work now apart from that you know you can also uh, you know uh, until now whatever i illustrated that was a single uh, graft but you can also go for a double graft so onto a double graft you can have you know uh, both the sites which could be grafted on the animal and depending on your requirement whether it comes from the same animal or the same species same race or you want to have a graft from another race or which we call it as a xenograft and other things you can still experiment and this is also uh, will follow the same protocol uh, which uh, which was followed for the single graft now now uh, this we again extrapolated to 
into various kind of immunological studies, various kind of biomarker studies, uh, various kinds of inflammatory biomarkers and other components. I did not wanted to show those components over here, but the, the entire intention is, you know, skin grafting model is not difficult. Okay, that is the bottom line of the story. That's the gist of the story. Uh, I just wanted to tell you that, you know, I have been mentored by the greatest people who are like pioneers in that particular field. As I was trying to tell you, the entire work of my postdoc was being monitored at uh, Dr. Mitzi's laboratory uh, at University of South Carolina. And uh, you see the person who is standing, you know, at the top there. Uh, she is Jessica, uh, who is uh, now uh, she worked as a postdoc at uh, Howard uh, University, uh, Boston campus. And then it was uh, David who actually helped me out for a lot of my studies. Uh, then, uh, you know, I have uh, a Bob Price who is the editor in chief for uh, Journal of Microscopy. Uh, the man on the, uh, on the right is uh, uh, none other than uh, Professor Patrick who is the, the entire developer of the open soft tool, which is used for microbiome, which is called as mother. And uh, not to forget, uh, you know, Sharon, uh, Dr. Sharon, uh, she was, uh, you know, uh, an experimental person who actually helped me in developing a lot of notobiotics, especially at uh, University of Chapel Hill, uh, North Carolina, and uh, at uh, Duke University, North Carolina campus. So all these people, you know, were instrumental in shaping me up. Okay, and uh, because of all their knowledge, which happened they mentored me in a very well uh, fashion and uh, you know whatever small things whatever I have learned is mainly because of good mentors so the gist of the story is at Biotechnica we are trying to inculcate the same cult of you know mentorship it is not just we teach you but on the other way mentoring people becomes very very important mentoring in brains becomes very very important that is how we are able to transform ideas to you know innovations and innovations to reality and this reality or this innovation can actually minimize suffering in the in the given society and that is how we can improve the quality of life and which can lead into human well-being so at biotechnica the entire intention is to give you internships and uh, you know certification programs and to give you and uh, you know 24 into 7 you know uh, scientific support so that any point of time you do not feel that you have been left out in the laboratory even for a small you know calculation to the biggest uh, experiment okay we are able to help you out both in terms of wet lab and dry lab and that is where we at biotechnica stand out okay in helping all our students and there is a great level of satisfaction which is again comes as a reward from our student when the same student you know completes their phd or their postdoc the kind of you know uh, gratitude what they exhibit is simply you know uh, unexplainable and that is why you know we make sure that we give you full support to pursue your research or your postdoctoral studies or your mtex uh, dissertation work so that you know uh, your satisfaction is our motivation and our motivation will actually you know uh, drives us for the next level so that we can bring good science uh, finally uh, to the young uh, scientific enthusiasts so with all these things i i thank you people for getting connected and staying with us for a very very longer time please do subscribe to, to biotechnica and also join our telegram channel wherein you get regular updates on everything and not to forget don't forget to avail a lot of scholarships which have been actually you know given by shekhar suman sir who is the ceo and md of uh, biotechnica and rasayanika so with all these things we are with open hands we welcome you for for any kind of assistance at biotechnica so that we together can make a difference thank you very much goodbye